Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another Civilization 6 in-depth video, where today we'll be taking a look at tourists and the culture victory. Um, so culture victories are something in uh, Civ 6 that a lot of people will, you know, take part in, and they'll win culture victories, um, and they'll encounter them quite often, but yet very few people actually know, um, like, what the parts of a culture victory are and what the actual requirements to win are. Um, so today we're going to be going over some of the misconceptions behind culture victories, um, the core mechanics of them, and how everything works with culture victories, and I'm going to be giving a few tips on on how to improve your culture victory game. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and move on to the main parts of the culture victory. So as far as I'm concerned, there are four main parts of the culture victory. The first of which is culture, which I'm sure we're probably all pretty familiar with. Um, the second of which is tourism, which I'm sure we're all pretty familiar with. And one of the biggest misconceptions um, whenever people think about culture victories is that people think that culture doesn't actually matter for a culture victory. They think that just tourism is uh, what matters. And uh, this is not true. And this is because culture and tourism each relate to something very specific with uh, culture victories. So culture relates to domestic tourists, um, which are kind of like your, your defense. Um, whenever it comes to culture victories, and tourism relates to foreign tourists, which is kind of like um, your offense and how you win the game. Um, so those are the four main parts of the culture victory, so let's go ahead and dive into the first one, and let's talk about culture for a few minutes. So out of all the uh, parts of a culture victory, I'm sure that culture is the one that most people are the most familiar with, because culture is just straight up a core yield of, uh, of Civ 6. It's, just, it's a core yield of the game, and it's uh, it's something that you're going to be getting every single game, no matter what ga uh, what type of victory you're going for. Um, so what culture does is it allows the research of civics, and you can acquire culture through theater squares, luxuries, certain wonders, etc. So there's also, like, choral music, which gives you, uh, it's a belief for religions that gives you culture um, from, like, shrines and temples equal to the faith output. Um, there's various various other religious beliefs. Uh, you can get culture from things such as relics, from great works. Um, so there's a lot of ways to get culture, and uh, out of all the parts of a culture victory, uh, culture itself is probably the least complex. Um, so for the purpose of the culture victory, all you want to know are, is that um, you want to get a lot of culture per turn, um, and just a lot of culture in general. So uh, building lots of theater squares, um, building some wonders, it's all going to be very nice, um, because that's just going to kind of bulk you up as a uh, as, as a culture victory, you know, uh, competitor. And having a lot of culture is going to allow you to get through civics faster, which uh, civics can provide some very nice policy cards um, that will enhance other parts of the culture victory. Uh, so overall, culture is not, it's not a particularly complex thing. It's pretty simple. Um, in, in general, it's just more culture is better, so get as much culture as you can. Moving on to the second of the main parts of the culture victory, we have tourism, which is, um, well, culture and tourism are, uh, are quite different because tourism can be a lot more complex than culture is. Um, so tourism, much like uh, culture, is a core element of the culture victory. Um, and also, a lot of people don't know this, but tourism is actually a per turn value, just like culture. A lot of times people see, you know, um, they just have their tourism value and it says, you know, maybe like 680. So they think, oh, I have 680 tourism. Um, what it actually is, it, it is 680 tourism per turn. And uh, we'll get into how that affects things a little bit later. Um, so tourism also, additionally, comes in multiple types. There's religious tourism, um, there's tourism from works of art, works of writing, works of music, and they're all categorized under separate, uh, separate types of tourism. Um, so that is one thing to uh, keep in mind. Once again, we're going to be talking about that a little bit later. Um, that especially comes into mind whenever we talk about modifiers for tourism. Um, aside from modifiers, though, the multiple types don't play too much of a role. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, you can receive modifiers for tourism based on certain criteria. Um, so let's move on to some of the ways that we can earn tourism. Um, so there are quite a few ways you can earn tourism. I'll go through the list here. So first off, we have wonders. Um, and whenever you construct wonders, you get uh, plus two tourism from the wonder, and uh, you get one additional tourism per turn each turn at, or each era after the wonder is constructed. Um, so wonders are a pretty good way to get tourism. They're not the best if you want to get a lot. Um, but at least in the early game, uh, getting a little bit of a base of tourism can uh, come from wonders, and it is something that is quite nice to do. I would recommend building um, quite a f like almost as many wonders as you can if you're going for a uh, culture victory, because wonders are never going to hurt. Second on the list, we have holy cities. So if uh, if you found a religion, uh, the holy city will provide plus eight uh, religious tourism per turn. Um, and much along the same lines, relics, if you happen to find a relic from a goody hut in the early game, you will also receive plus eight tourism per turn. Um, so holy city and relics, um, they're not particularly useful. Relics can be actually very good, but holy city's not so much, because normally if you uh, go for a holy city, you're probably going to be, you know, you might be looking towards a religious victory, and uh, plus eight, um, 
you really can't expand upon that anymore. It's only going to go down for reasons we'll talk about later. Um, so the Holy City is not, it's not a great way to earn tourism, but it is, it is a little bit that is uh, extra that can just be nice. Um, so a big part of uh, getting tourism comes from writings, music, and art. Um, so with writings, you get plus four per uh, work of writing. With music, you get plus three. And with art, you get plus two. Um, but if you happen to theme your art, so you know you can uh, sort the art in your museums. If you theme the art, then uh, it's doubled, so you get plus four. Um, artifacts as well provide plus three, and they are uh, doubled if themed as well. So um, try as hard as you can to theme your art and artifacts, because art, if it's not themed, is not going to provide too much. But if it is themed, it provides plus four, which is the same as writings, which is quite high. And uh, artifacts will provide plus six uh, each if they're themed, so that'll give you quite a bit of tourism. Um, one of the biggest parts to winning a culture victory um, comes in the form of seaside resorts and national parks. So seaside resorts provide uh, tourism equal to the tiles appeal that is constructed upon. Um, seaside resorts are those things that you can build on the coast um, uh, as long as a tile has, I think, its breathtaking appeal or greater, um, and they will provide tourism equal to the tile appeal. So um, if you have breathtaking appeal, that's going to be um, for tourism as a base, and it can only go up from there. Um, so seaside resorts are something that are very nice. National parks as well, very similar, um, except you don't have to build them on the coast. Um, you just have to have a lot of uh, high appeal tiles, and you can get quite a bit of tourism from national parks. And the last way to earn tourism is from flight. Um, something that not a lot of people know is that once you uh, research flight, um, any tile that provides culture as a yield will provide equal tourism as well. Um, so things like chamomoles or uh, paella de zaz from Persia, I probably just butchered that pronunciation, but um, like tiles such as that will all provide tourism once you get flight equal to the culture. Um, so that is something that is very nice to keep in mind, especially if you're playing either Persia or, uh, or the Mapuche. Um, so... Let's move on and talk about modifiers for tourism, because now you know all these ways that you can get tourism, um, but how can you really make use of your tourism? And the biggest way to make use of tourism is through uh, utilizing modifiers. So what modifiers are, they are special bonuses that once you uh, achieve certain criteria, they will give you a percentage-based either benefit or penalty to the tourism that you output towards a certain sieve um, per turn. So your your tourism per turn is actually on a, on a per sieve basis rather than just an overall. Um, and the modifiers are what, what makes it, you know, per sieve. Because if you're getting plus, you know, maybe 25% to a certain sieve and plus nothing to another one, then you're going to get plus 25% more tourism um, per turn towards that sieve. Um, so the various modifiers are uh, listed here. Um, the first four are, like, circumstance-based. The, uh, the next two are tech-based. The next two are policy-based. And the last one is a belief. Um, so starting with the top, we have open borders. Um... And Open Borders provides plus 25% tourism towards that sieve. Um, so whenever you're playing a Culture Victory game, um, you definitely want to be as friendly as you can and have Open Borders with as much people as you can because that's going to give you plus 25% extra tourism per turn, which is just going to be very nice. So you generally do not want to be super aggressive and make a lot of enemies because having Open Borders and, number two on the list, Trade Routes, which will provide another plus 25%, um, can be very nice. And if you stack the two together, then you're going to be getting plus 50% to your tourism. Um, another thing, if you have a different religion um, than your opponent, you're going to be losing 50% of the tourism, but that's 50% of your religious tourism only. So instead of, you know, outputting uh, 8 tourism, then you're going to lose 50% of that, so you're only going to be out, uh, uh, outputting 6 from your holy city. Um, so that's not too big of a deal, because I find that you don't tend to accumulate too much religious tourism, um, but it is something to keep in mind. Um, next, we have government factor, which uh, I said it's complicated for reasons we will go into in, uh, well, very soon. Um, printing is a tech um, that you can research, and uh, upon researching the tech, you immediately get plus 100% uh, writing tourism um, just just for having the tech. So uh, something very nice. Um, it is a tech that you definitely want to get moderately early, if, especially if you're going for, you know, like the writing strategy. You're getting a lot of great works um, because double, uh, double tourism from works of writing is very nice because... Works of writing already provide plus four tourism, so getting plus eight, that is quite significant, especially, you know, in that mid-game uh, section where you're going to be researching printing. Um, in addition, uh, having enlightenment makes it so that um, incoming tourism to you is reduced by 50%. So if, if you know, one of your opponents researches uh, enlightenment, then you're going to lose 50% of your religious uh, tourism towards them. Um, so it's not something that, like, you can really control, but whenever an opponent gets enlightenment, uh, then you're going to start losing 50% of your religious tourism. 
Um, as, far as, as far as policy cards are, um, are concerned, we have online communities, which um, provides an, an additional plus 50% with the trade route, so you'd be getting plus 75% tourism with a trade route, uh, which is very, very nice, especially in the late game, whenever you're making, you know, like a thousand tourism, so getting getting an additional 75%, that's gonna, that's gonna boost you up quite a bit. Um, and we also have satellite broadcasts, which um, doubles tourism from works of music. Um, uh, satellite broadcast is good. I mean, it's definitely a policy card that I would run, but only if you find that you can get enough great, uh, great works of music, because I find it is quite hard to come by, um, slots for great works of music, um, just because you, you really are gonna get most of those from having, uh, what are they, radio towers or whatever they are, or broadcast stations, or I forget what the exact name is, um, so you're gonna be pretty late in the game when you get that, and you're gonna be pretty close to winning, so it's not gonna have too much of an effect, but uh, it is still something I would recommend running. And lastly, we have Reliquaries, which is a religious belief that provides uh, triple tourism towards relics. And I don't really think this is ever all that great to get, um, just because you're not going to be getting too many relics in a game. Um, tripling their tourism is very nice because they provide plus eight already. Um, so tripling that is, you know, going to give you 24 tourism, which is insane. And then if you're playing Congo, it is going to be quite ridiculous. But of course, if you're playing Congo, then you're not, probably not going to have your own religion. Um, so uh, reliquaries, I wouldn't necessarily re recommend it um, solely for the fact of going religion and culture is a really, really slow way to play the game. And a lot of the times you'll suffer uh, super hard in the early and mid games if you go for that. So um, not something I would necessarily recommend. Um, as far as other modifiers are concerned, um, there's just some from, you know, like various uh, great people and civs. So America gets plus 100% tourism from uh, cities to all civs who have entered the modern era. And um, that is just on a per city basis. Um, so that's for making their unique building, which I, for the life of me, I cannot remember the name of it. But um, that is one thing that America gets. Um, and in addition, France also gets plus 100% tourism from wonders. So you'll be getting four from each wonder and two more every era. Uh, which is actually very nice for culture victories, uh, especially as you progress later into the game, it's going to stack up more and more and more. Um, so wonder whoring as France is something that you definitely want to go about doing if you're going to play France. Um, as far as great merchants are concerned, uh, the two merchants, Bents and Breedlove, give plus 25% to sieves that you already have a trade route with. Um, so you can get a ton of extra tourism from trade routes if you uh, have either of these great merchants, or maybe both of these great merchants, um, the trade route and uh, the other, what was it, plus 50% uh, from trade routes, so you can get a total of like 125% tourism just from having uh, a trade route to a civilization, um, so that is like, it stacks up really nice. Um, and great scientist, uh, Leakery provides plus 200% from artifacts, which can be nice if, you know, you've built a lot of archaeologists and uh, archaeological museums and you've, you've dug up a lot of artifacts, plus 200% tourism from that. Um, it actually can be quite nice. So these are some great people that I definitely would recommend getting if you, uh, if you have the opportunity to. Um, so that is it for modifiers, except not quite. We have one more, and uh, that is the government modifier, which I mentioned was, uh, was quite complicated. So let's go ahead and move on to the government modifier. So now as we move on to the government modifier, things start to get a little bit more complicated because government modifiers have their own unique formula that governs, haha, <laughs> get what I did there, um, what the value of the government modifier is. So uh, the formula is as follows. Uh, the modifier is equal to the value of government 1 plus the value of government 2, and that is all multiplied by 3. Um, so the value of government 1 would be your government, the value of government 2 will be your opponent's government that you're affecting, and then, you know, multiplies it all by 3. So each uh, government type has its own government value, so chieftain has a 0, autocracy has negative 2, oligarchy has negative 2, classical republic is negative 1, merchant republic is negative 2, monarchy is negative 3, theocracy has negative 4, democracy has negative 3, communism has neg negative 6, and fascism has negative 5. Um, so what does this all mean, necessarily? Um, so the big thing to keep in mind here is that um, there are certain government types that are better to have than others. Um, so if you're going for a culture victory, it is definitely in uh, in your best interest to run the government types that have the, the smallest modifier numbers. Um, so running communism that has a negative six would be a very bad idea because if someone else has communism, um, that's going to be negative six plus negative six times three, which is going to be negative 36, um, which is very bad. <laughs> getting negative 36% overall tourism is going to suck. Um, so running democracy, though, you would get negative three plus negative six times three, which would be negative 18%, which is a lot better. Um, hopefully I just did the math right. I don't know if I did there. No, it would be negative 27%, sorry. Um, so, uh, 
once again, it's still a much better number than having communism. Um, so as just an example of that, um, I, you know, if I had democracy and someone had communism, the modifier would be, as I said, negative 3 plus negative 6 times 3 is negative 27%. And another thing to note here is that the modifier is still applied even if the uh, if, if even if both civilizations have the same government type. Um, so if I had democracy and someone else had democracy, it would be negative three plus negative three times three, which then would be negative eighteen percent, as I tried to say before. Um, so that is one thing to keep in mind. I don't know why it's you know it provides the different government modifier if the same government is had, but it is something that is had nonetheless. Um, so. That is the government modifier, and those are modifiers in general, something that are very important to playing a tourism game, because in general you want to get as many positive modifiers as you can. Um, because if you're able to get, you know, over double your normal tourism, and you're already making a thousand tourism per turn, and you can get two thousand tourism per turn towards your opponents, um, that's going to be quite insane. And most of them are quite easy to get, like the modifiers, because open borders and trade routes, very easy. Um, even running the policy is nice and easy, you know, just having printing. So you can get modifiers pretty easily, and they're definitely something that you want to go for. Um, so now let's move on to what all this tourism stuff actually does, and what this culture stuff does. And let's talk about domestic tourists. So domestic tourists are one of the two really crucial parts of the culture victory that almost, like, nobody really understands. Because, you know, it's in the, the culture victory, like, little pull-down menu, and a lot of people see domestic tourists and you're like, wow, like, what's that? Like, what does that actually do? And, like, is that related to my population or something? Um, but no. So what domestic tourists are is they serve as your defense against a culture victory. Um, because the sieve with the highest domestic tourism, you know, other than yourself, is the one that you must pass to win. Um, so say, you know, France has 100 uh, domestic tourists and England has 75, but Persia has uh, like 150, then to win the game, uh, you're going to need 151 foreign tourists to win the game. Uh, we'll talk about foreign tourists in just like a minute or two. Um, and domestic tourists are the reason why culture is still important in a culture victory. So, um, so now, of course, the obvious question is, well, how does culture actually play into domestic tourists? So the formula for getting uh a domestic tourist is that the number of domestic tourists that you have is equal to your total culture accumulation throughout the whole game divided by 100. Um, so from this formula, like we can see that you really want to have a high culture output because um, the more tourism per turn you're getting, the higher your total culture accumulation is going to grow, and the more tourists you uh, domestic tourists you are going to get. Um, so, another thing to note is that civic boosts actually count towards the accumulation. So, whenever you get a Eureka for a civic, um, it, you know, gives you 40% of the, the cost of the policy. Um, so, if, you know, this, uh, if the civic that you're researching has a culture cost of 100 culture, um, and you get the civic boost, then it's going to give you, uh, 40 free culture into your, uh, your total culture accumulation as well. Um, so getting a lot of Eurekas can actually be really helpful for gaining, uh, a, a ton of domestic tourists and just allowing you to be, uh, defensible. So, in general, the strategy for domestic tourists is that you want to have a lot so that someone else does not win a culture victory. So maybe you're playing, you know, a multiplayer game with your friends, and one of your friends is being a real jerk, and he's just building all these wonders, he has a high tourism output, and, you know, he's getting, um, like, he's, he's in danger of winning a culture victory against you. Um, so what one thing that you would want to do is put down a lot of theater squares, you know, get as much culture per turn as you can, and just try to boost your uh, your amount of domestic tourists, because uh, as long as you keep raising the number of domestic tourists you have, that's going to increase the amount of foreign tourists that, need, that he needs to win. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and talk about foreign tourists. While domestic tourism is like the defense for culture victory, foreign tourism is like the offense. So um, the big role of foreign tourists is that in order to win a culture victory, um, you have to get more foreign tourists um, than the sieve that has the highest number of domestic tourists uh, other than you, of course. Um, so you gain one foreign tourist each time when your uh, lifetime accumulation uh, of, of tourism passes a certain threshold. Um, once again, this is on a per sieve basis. And each foreign tourist that you get from a sieve takes one domestic tourist away from that sieve. So uh, why is that important? That's important because that can lower the amount of foreign tourists that you need to win the game. Um, because if we go back to our previous example, and I said, I think it was Persia that I said that has 150 domestic tourists. So I would need 151 foreign tourists. If, you know, I can take away, if I can gain one foreign tourist from Persia, that's going to lower the amount of foreign tourists I need to, uh, to win by one, because then they're going to only have 149 domestic tourists, and I'm going to need 150 foreign tourists to win the game now. Um, so that'll come into play a little bit later when I talk about some of the strategies for winning a culture victory. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about how we calculate the number of foreign tourists. 
So as I mentioned um, in the intro to the foreign tourists, there's a certain threshold that you have to pass to, to gain one foreign tourist. And the formula for this that was uh, dug up from the XML files of the game um, is that the threshold is equal to the number of sieves in the game times 150. So for a standard game, that would be 1,200. For a small game, it'd be 900. Um, for a large game, that would be 1,500. Um, there's only one problem, though, uh, and that... I found that there um, there seems to be a bug with this right now. Either that or it was changed, you know, without anybody mentioning. Um, and as far as I've tested, the threshold is at a constant 1,200. Um, so this is actually a bit peculiar and something that I would like uh, your help on to just... Uh, one thing you can do is you can post in the comments um, whenever we go to, like, uh, the real-life application, you know, of, like, all these formulas and that stuff and I talk about a game. Um, I'm going to ask you to post some numbers. Um, so what I would like to know is what game size you... Or just how many sieves are in the game. Um, and then in the culture victory screen, hover over one of the sieves and tell me what your lifetime tourism is and the number of foreign tourists you've gotten from this sieve. Um, because one thing I found is that the threshold um, in all of my games that I've played, I, I, I normally play on small map types, so the threshold should be 900, um, but interestingly enough, it's not. It's at a constant 1200. Um, and at first I thought that this was related to the difficulty of the game because I play at Deity, and I loaded up an old save from Prince, and it was at the expected 900. But I thought, you know, well, like, this is strange, so I, I tested on lower difficulties, and it was back at 1200, so I was I was uh, very confused about that. So it might have been something that changed with Rise and Fall, because um, all those uh, older games that I loaded up were pre-Rise and Fall games. Um, so I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it's intentional, but the threshold um, appears to just be at a constant 1200. So uh, as I said, if you have any of those, uh, those numbers, uh, please put them in the comment section below. So just uh, let me know what the lifetime tourism is uh, with a certain sieve, the number of foreign tourists you have, um, the number of players in the game, and uh, the difficulty that you're playing on. Um, so if you could do that, that'd be awesome. Hopefully we can find something out more about foreign tourists. Um, but, so I'm gonna say that the threshold is at a constant 1200. Um, if that changes, then this is what the formula should be. It should be number of sieves in the game uh, times 150. Um, so how this threshold is applied uh, is that your foreign tourists is equal to your lifetime tourism accumulation divided by the threshold. Um, and it should be noted that this all always rounds down. So even if you're at, you know, like, uh, like 15.9, it's going to run round down to 15. Uh, so, as you can see, it is generally a good idea. Uh, this tourism, tourism accumulation is why your tourism value is important. Because if, you know, you're making 1,200 tourism per turn, um, and the threshold is 1,200, then you're going to be gaining one foreign tourist every single turn that you pass. Um, so, something to keep in mind is, is just that that's really the reason why you want a high, uh, a high tourism uh, amount. So, with all this information in mind now, let's move on and let's actually look at a real example from uh, a game that I recently played. So this example is from a game I recently played. Um, I was playing on Deity as the Mapuche, and uh, well, the Mapuche are not very good, but uh, you can you can play a Culture Victory fairly decently as the as the Mapuche. They are they are a pretty okay uh, Culture Victory sieve, just because of their uh, chemimols, they can provide quite a bit of tourism. But uh, so. As you can see here, uh, on the right there, uh, the amount of total foreign tourists that I have is at 137 out of uh, 323 to win. And where does this 323 come from, you may ask? Well, um, if you take a look at Cyrus's uh, domestic tourism count, which is right below his name, he has 322 domestic tourists. So in order to win, I have to pass that up by one, so I need 323 uh, foreign tourists. And uh, where does my 137 come from? Well, if you just add up uh, the hour visitors from, which is your foreign tourist count, um, from each of the civilizations, you will realize that that adds up to 137. So now if we, you know, hover over the, the foreign tourism count for uh, Cyrus, we'll see that it um, provides, uh, you know, a few more numbers. Um, and these are the numbers that I'm mostly looking for um, for you to post in the comment section below. So... Uh, Cyrus, um, with him, I have 37,695 lifetime tourism with him. Um, and from this, we can find out um, where my 31 tours, uh, foreign tourists come from. Um, so my foreign tourist count is equal to 37,695 divided by the threshold, which in this case is 1,200 for some reason. And once again, don't know why. Um, which is equal to 31.41, and because it always rounds down, um, we are at 31. And now if we take a look at some of the modifiers here, specifically the government modifier, um, in this game I have democracy and Cyrus has communism. Um, so the government multiplier is equal to negative 3 minus 6, which is negative 9, times 3, which is negative 27%. Um, so that is where all of those numbers come from. 
And uh, as I said, if you could, uh, please provide some of these numbers for me so that I can hopefully find out what the heck is going on with the threshold. Um, so this is where you would get those numbers from. You can just hover over, you know, the foreign tourist count in this uh, this little world rankings culture menu um, and post the, the amount of lifetime tourism, the number of foreign tourists, um, how many people are in the game, and what difficulty you are playing on. So if you could do that, that would be great. And hopefully we would be able to find out why the, uh, why the, why the tourism threshold is, for whatever reason, um, apparently locked at 1200. So with all this in mind though, this is about, uh, that's, that's about a wrap of the major mechanics uh, of the culture victory. So let's get on to some of the tips to help you win a culture victory. So the first tip is pretty obvious and it's that you want your tourism as high as you can get it. Um, because the higher tourism per turn you have um, means that you're going to be hopefully passing up that threshold more and more often and gaining one more foreign tourist which is going to, you know, get you closer and closer to the amount of foreign tourists that you need to win. So, uh, in general, you just want to have as much tourism as you can possibly get. Um, the second tip is one that not a lot of people seem to know about, and it's that governments that provide the least negative modifiers are chieftain into um, Classical Republic, into Merchant Republic, and into Democracy. Because by choosing this government path, that's going to make it so that you have the least, um, the least penalty from the government modifier, um, because as we talked about before, you know, if I had picked communism, then my government modifier for communism would have been negative six instead of negative three. Um, so that's going to be quite detrimental to uh, to just your the entirety of your uh, your game in the late game because it's going to percentage based. Uh, it's going to provide a percentage based penalty, which can be quite a lot. You know, if you're making you know a thousand tourism and you have a 37 percent modifier or, or negative 36 percent modifier, you're going to be losing. 360 tourism just for having communism uh, instead of democracy which so you would definitely want to have um, that government path because it would just help to make sure that you, you keep your modifiers as high as you can possibly get them the third tip is that you want uh, you want to have a lot of trade routes and open borders to help your tourism output because trade routes and open borders are things that are so easy to get um, it's pretty much just a matter of you know a quick like click of the mouse and <laughs> most of the time um, civs will be friendly enough to at least you know take open borders trade routes they don't even have to you know consent to it you can just send them that sounds really bad but uh, you can just send them a trade route and just like that you're gonna be getting 25% uh, extra tourism towards that civ so spam out trade routes um, you don't necessarily want to send all your trade routes to one sieve because I don't believe it stacks. Like, if you have one trade route, you get plus 25%. If you have two trade routes, you still get plus 25%. Um, so you definitely do want to spread your trade routes out among the various civilizations. And uh, getting open borders with as many civilizations as you can is just going to help uh, increase your government or your, your tourism modifiers with all of the various civilizations. So a very good thing to do. The fourth tip is that culture per turn is your best defense against a tourism victory. Um, so, you know, as we talked about in the very beginning, one of the biggest misconceptions is that culture has no effect on um, your tourism or your culture victory. Um, and that's wrong because culture is your defense. So if, if you notice that someone is, you know, getting dangerously close to winning a culture victory, um, just spam out a bunch of stuff uh, to get you a bunch of culture. So, you know, theater squares, buildings in your theater squares, you could, you know, maybe work some different tiles. You could perhaps build a wonder or something. You could change your policy cards. Um, anything to get you culture is going to help uh, to ensure that you don't lose to someone that's trying to win a culture victory. And that can be useful even if you're not the one that's going for the culture victory. Maybe you, you know you're going for a science victory, and someone's going to beat you uh, beat you with a culture victory before you can win your science victory. Um, quickly changing to increase your culture output and get more domestic tourists is a very good thing to do to make sure that uh, your opponent does not win a culture victory. Um, the fist, uh, the, the, the fist, the fifth tip is that um, it's a good idea to get as many modifiers as you can with the sieve that has the highest domestic tourist count. Um, and the reason for this is because, as we discussed, um, getting one foreign tourist from a sieve is going to take away one of their domestic tourists. Um, so the sieve with the highest domestic tourism count is going to be, you know, the limit that of uh, foreign tourists that you need to pass to win the game. So if you spam modifiers against them, you could lower their domestic tourist count and lower the number of foreign tourists that you need to win. So, um, and this is very closely related to tip number six. So if all else fails and you just really, you really just want to win that game, um, taking out the sieve with the highest domestic tourism count can lower the number of foreign tourists to win. Um, so say you're in a game and maybe you have 100 um, foreign tourists accumulated and, you know, the threshold's at like, something ridiculous like 380 because someone just has a ton of domestic tourists 
but the next highest after that is only at like you know 120. If you take that person out of the game, the uh, the the foreign tourist to win is going to drop to 121, and you're probably going to win the game very fast. Um, another thing to note is that um, once you gain a foreign tourist, you cannot lose it. So even if you take that sieve out of the game and those do and those foreign tourists are technically from that sieve, um, you don't lose the tourists, so you get to keep them. So um, worst comes to worst, taking out a sieve with the highest domestic tourism um, can lower the number of foreign tourists to win. Um, this is the one. This is one to use only in like extreme cases, though, because you don't want all the sieve to hate you, because then you're not going to be able to get o open borders, and if they declare war on you, you're not going to be able to send trade routes. So your modifiers are going to suffer. And with that, that is about all I have to say about tourism and uh, culture victories. I'm going to list my sources that I use in the description below. So if you're, if you're looking to read up a little bit more on culture victories, uh, feel free to go ahead and check those out. They're actually, they're, they're quite good. Um, some of them are a little bit dated, uh, as we found out with, you know, the tourism threshold thing. So not exactly sure what's going on with that. Um, if I find out, then I will uh, I'll update the video description to, uh, to list what I found out. If you uh, yourself have any ideas on what's going on, feel free to put that in the comment section below. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. I'll, I'll be certain to answer them. Um, so thank you everyone for watching. I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. And if you're looking for more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.